There's an old saying that there's no business like show business. Well, today we're going to tap into why there's no business like the sports business. Let's go. Hit the screen. So the Green Bay Packers, right? They're the perfect example because they're not owned by an individual owner that's a billionaire tycoon. They're not owned by a conglomerate, some hedge fund group of millionaires and billionaires. They're a nonprofit corporation. That's who owns the Green Bay Packers. So because of that, their public financial records, their financial records are public. They're made public. They have to be to keep the nonprofit status. Thus, we get the numbers, okay? Because the NFL does not like us knowing all the financial numbers. So to get a little peek, we got to go to the Green Bay Packers. So this information is courtesy of Andrew Brandt, who is a very, very good follow on the Elon app, has a good sports business pod as well. The Packers financial report came out today. And no surprise, business is booming. The Packers have a total revenue of $654 million. $654 million says NFL salary cap this upcoming year is $255 million. <laughs> we can do that math without busting out the calculator. We don't need the calculator to do that math. If the Packers spend to the cap, they still have $400 million for non-player spending. That's just the Packers, okay? 400 M's potentially could go if they don't spend a penny more, which we know they can't do. But in essence, the money that they are physically allocated to pay is the salary cap. They have to pay their players. They could go into playing employees and sponsorships and all that type of stuff. But 400 M's. So even if you spend 100 million, still 300 M's up for a team that's owned by a non-profit stockholders. Wow. Amazing. That's the money that the NFL generates. And if we want to get deeper into it and the model of where the revenue sharing and stuff like that, like actually, if you want to find out the money and calculate the money. This is another tweet talking about the Packers and their 402.3 million in national revenue from the NFL. If you were to multiply the just the revenue, okay, so we already did the math. Total revenue is 654. The salary cap is 255. That's 400 in revenue. If we just take that and multiply that by 32. The NFL distributed roughly 12.97, damn near $13 billion. And that's up from $12 billion last year. The money just continues <laughs> to grow in the NFL. <laughs> Let us not forget that this is the sport that refuses to pay its players fully guaranteed contracts. This is such a piss poor job by the NFL PA. You have one job every CBA, and that's to try to get these players fully guaranteed money. And you are constantly inept. You are constantly unable. You are constantly incompetent of doing the one thing to make this whole thing seem just that much more fair. It's problematic as hell because let, let, let's be clear. We're assuming in this breakdown here that the Packers are spending to the cap. Well, guess what? They're not. They're not even close. They have the seventh most cap space available in the league. So it's not even the 399, but we could bump it up to 400 million that they have in potential spending money, but they have even more than that. When you add into the fact that they're not even spending the entire $255 million cap. And the NFLPA can't get fully guaranteed contracts and they're gonna have to go to an 18th game? I, I look, man. <laughs> this is by far the worst union. The worst union. Not even in all sports, but in the entire workforce. And I can tell you, I've worked for some shitty unions. The union I used to work for back in the day shits all over what the NFLPA constantly tricks off. Constantly. The leverage. And the buying power that the NFLPA has, they just constantly keep getting outsmarted just because of a revenue split. Just because of a revenue split. 
They like the revenue split. They're going to go to 18, probably 20 games in the near future. But because they get to split the revenue, they're happy. Fuck the wear and tear on the bodies. Fuck the wear and tear in terms of the health insurance post-career. Forget the CTE that's always looming. Forget any of that stuff. Forget the fact that they have the shortest projected career lifespan in all sports. Like, forget all of that. We get that revenue split, though. I mean, okay. Okay. If that's all you care about. If that's all you give a damn about. But that's just NFL. Let's go to the NBA. Where there is fully guaranteed contracts, even to second round pick Bronny James. 55th overall, fully guaranteed bread. That's why you should teach your sons basketball and not football. So... Your man's Woj had the mini Woj bomb of James Dolan, the Knicks owner, criticizing the potential new 74, basically $75 billion media rights deal that is on the table for the league's board of directors to approve. Everybody and their mama is talking about the media rights, the media rights. Is Netflix going to be in the mix? Amazon wants to be in the mix. NBC's back in the mix. Is TNT on the way out? Everyone's wrapped up in this. James Dolan is like, yeah, I don't care about all of that. The money is looking a little funny. And Dolan's quote are as follows. Due to revenue pooling, you are guaranteed to be neither a success nor a failure. Of course, to get there, the league must take down the successful franchises and redistribute to the less successful. This is revenue sharing. They're calling it revenue pooling, but in essence, this is revenue sharing, similar to the NFL model. This new media deal goes a long way to accomplishing that goal. So basically, the Knicks and more, more specifically, Dolan feels like, hey, if I'm the Knicks and I get bread because I'm the Knicks, I'm in the largest media market and my fans are dumb enough to keep coming to our games, whether we win 20 games or 50, I shouldn't have to share money with teams that don't make money. Why should I need to share revenue that comes to me because I'm in the Mecca and bust some bread down to the Pelicans just because they're in the smallest media market? He's playing big bank, take little bank. Is he going to be able to get this off? Because if we really want to get down to the, to the nitty gritty of it and talk about the bread, let's, let, let's get into the bread of the Knicks. The Knicks were the most highest valued franchise last year. Coming into this past season, it is now the Dubs, the Warriors. The Warriors are evaluated at a $7.7 billion valuation, while the Knicks are at 6.6. Both teams are up, by the way. It's not like the Knicks lost money. They just lost their ranking in the spot because the Dubs are making money. They're printing money with, with that Chase Center out there in the Bay. So Knicks tape is at a $6.6 billion valuation. Now, again, if you want to get into the revenue, the revenue here is that $278 million in revenue. The operating costs are $92 million. So James Dolan <laughs> is walking around, potentially, here is his company, his conglomerate, whatever, his trust, whatever you want to do, however you want to classify it is. They're walking around with about a buck 60, a buck 60 off rip. A buck sixty once you brought in the at the operating income and then you bring into the salary cap and all that stuff, but the valuation in terms of the stadium, in terms of the brand and the merch and all that stuff, six point six billion dollar valuation. And their debt is sixty two percent, by the way. Like a true New Yorker living check to check, even when you're up a hundred and sixty plus M's. Is James Dolan in the New York Knicks. But let's take a gander at some of these other teams. Do you see this debt here? 2% debt here? That's for the Los Angeles Clippers. The team is worth $4.6 billion. Their revenue is $362 million. Their operating income is $12 million. Steve Ballmer walked in there and dropped $2 billion cash to buy their franchise during all the Sterling nonsense. It is now getting $362 million when his operating income is only 12. And he's got a new building that's opening out there in Inglewood this year. You damn right, Kawhi. You're not playing for Team USA. 
Kawhi, bring your ass back home. I need you to help me cash out like the Warriors did with that Chase Center and Steph. I need you opening night in that new dome in Inglewood. So the bread is going to keep on growing. And these teams up here, the Doves, the Knicks, even the Lake Show, Celtics, Clips, they're not trying to spend and share no bread with these teams at the bottom. Look at the Pels. Pels are down here at the bottom. Pels are worth $1.6 billion. Even their revenue, $268, and their operating cost is $94 million. They're in 14% debt. James Dolan is like, why am I kicking bread to them when they're in the plus like I am? And they got way less debt than me. Why am I pulling bread and sharing bread with them? I'm not mad at it. It's one of the few times in life I can say I agree with James Dolan because if I'm out here and my squad is up damn near six and a half, almost seven billion, and I'm out here with a buck 60, I'm not trying to break down some of that buck 60 to the Grizzlies who are up in the same type of ratio like I am. Why? When I got way more debt than them, and my operating income is equal to theirs. So I owe more money than they do. They get to keep more of their money than I do, but I still got to share my money with them. That business sense doesn't make a lot of sense. And lastly, when it comes to sports money, we'll talk about the WNBA. The W reports are saying that the WNBA new media deal will pay them $2.2 billion over the next 11 years. That is an average of $200 million per season. The league is currently making around $60 million per season. If this is accurate, that's more than a 300% increase. The question everyone is asking is, is it enough? Because let, let's be clear, and here is an important footnote, and I'm glad that they put this here. The WNBA PA can opt out of the current CBA after the 2025 season. So we are likely to see player pay increase again starting in 2026. Okay. So no matter what this media deal does, this does not hinder players from opting out and getting their own bag via the CBA. But this, this me, new media deal will feed the bread and pull some of that bread into the CBA for the players to get a piece of. Okay. So is this enough with what we've seen with star power in Asia Wilson, star power in, you know, Caitlin Clark, say, say whatever you want, but it's star power. Angel Reese, you got the old heads, you got Brianna Stewart. Like you have enough personalities to push the sport forward. 11 years? Is that what, why would you lock yourself into a 11 year deal. It's like Patrick Mahomes. You're just coming off of a Super Bowl and then you go sign a 10 year deal. Yes, it's worth 500 million, but as soon as you sign that deal, every QB after you has signed a shorter and better deal. This is the, the, the windstorm that the WNBA has been waiting for, and they're going to go sign it away for 11 years. I need to see the opt-out language. Where is the opt-out language if there is any? Because to me, I would not sign an 11-year contract because that pretty much locks in what you hope is the whole career of Caitlin Clark. And if Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, and then you're going to have Juju next year, if all of them are who we think they are, you're going to be worth more than $2.2 billion. You're going to be worth more than $200 million per year to any company that's broadcasting your games. So this, to me, was a real risky move here. I know they want the safety of locking it in. We're good for the next decade and change. Cool. 200 mil, 300% increase. Great. But if the players you've been hyping that have pushed the popularity of this sport to where it's at a fever pitch... If those players hit, you're going to be worth even more. So why would you sign off 11 years of your, what you are going to assume is going to be your new peak, your new prime? Interesting move. Very, very interesting move.
Thank you for tapping into the content. If you've made it this far, leave me a dollar sign emoji in the comments to let me know that you've made it this far. Uh, but either way, YouTube seems to think you will like this video next. I'm a little bit more partial to this one, but I mean, either way, subscribe to the content right here and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.